Grant loves books. That's me. Today, the book is Fire Dwellers by Margaret Lawrence, published in, I don't know, when was it published, Grant? It was published in 1969. I really do love these covers because it is very, it reminds me about almost every single book that I read in high school. Americans, British, Irish, wherever you are, Canadian literature is really great. This novel is about Stacy Mac Indra. 60 or 70% of the novel is stream of consciousness, constant anxiety about everything. She is worried about her four children, extremely worried or anxious or questioning about her husband, Mac. Worries, she is anxious about the shape of her body, which is not the same shape that it used to be in when she was in her 20s or teenage years, now that she is 39 years old. She's worried about her drinking, <laughs> as she well should be. Litany of worry and anxiety she feels about everything in her periphery. And that is fun to read for a while. And after about 100 pages, it is a bit Boy, it sure would be nice if you could get yourself together and stop being such a bundle of nerves. Something I really enjoyed in this novel is that, you know, the main character we tend to feel is the hero of the story, the episode. But sometimes the main character is not a hero. Quite a lot of points in the novel where, like, she's nervous, she's worried. Oh, the children. Her husband is not treating the children very well. And her husband is so uncommunicative. He comes home and he's silent. He works. She badgers him. And there are these points where the children and her husband turn around and say to her, can't you please leave me alone? And I found those quite, like, this woman is a busybody and a nuisance. <laughs> and she's hysterical in her way. Not overly dramatic, but I don't think you would want to be her house guest for more than a few days. Towards the end of the novel, after quite a lot of nervous anxiety, there are three or four major dramatic moments in the novel that really make the initial part of the book quite worth the going. Here, let me try to phrase this in a way that doesn't give anything away. Like a very physical tragedy that was narrowly averted. And another physical tragedy that was not averted, but is something that will have to be dealt with. Someone's identity was exposed for being not what we thought it was. And these significant, dramatic moments that come like just boom, 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 right at the end of the novel, really make it a good book. I didn't say a great book. So Margaret Lawrence wrote a book that I have long said is my favorite Canadian novel. And it, it still is. The Stone Angel by Margaret Lawrence is just heart-rending. I've read it five times. That is the most I've ever read any novel. The first novel in a series, which is known as the Manawaka series. Manawaka is the fictitious a city in, I think, Manitoba. This series is brilliant and very beautiful. Honestly, it is. So each of these five novels in the series is concerned with one woman. The Stone Angel is about a 90-year-old woman who is reflecting back on her life. The second novel in the series, called A Jest of God, is about a school teacher who lives with her mother, who's a bit dictatorial, who is quite unhappy, to put it mildly, with what her life has become. And The Fire Dwellers, the third novel in the series, is about a woman who left Manawaka to come to live in Vancouver, which is close to where I live. I'm about to give a spoiler. So the second and the third novel 
um, A Jest of God and The Fire Dwellers, which is what I'm reviewing today. The two main characters of those, both of those novels are sisters. So the school teacher who never left her tiny hometown and the woman who left to go to live in Vancouver and to marry and to have children and a successful life, those are sisters. And often in either of those novels, they are looking at the sister enviously, critically considering the other's life. And that is quite good. So for a long time, I've been saying that The Stone Angel is my favorite novel. I thought it was time to re-examine the other novels in the Manawaka series. Jest of God, number two. The Fire Dwellers, number three. A Bird in the House, number four. That's a complicated one. And the fifth one, The Diviners. Like a lot of series, everyone thinks, believes, feels, the first book and the last book in the series are the greatest. And I probably agree with that. It's just that I have not read the last book in this series, The Diviners, for a really long time. So I think it is unwise to speak about a book that you haven't read for 20 years. So I'm rereading the Manawaka series. If you can do it, I recommend reading the entire series from book one to book five to get the best results. Personally, I don't like to read the same author over and over. I feel that their style becomes too familiar and too annoying for me. Maybe annoying is not the best word, but I, I just don't like to, to read the same author style again and again. But when reading a series, like last year I read The, the Sea of Fertility by Mishima, and I read books one to four. The year before that, what did I read? I read books one through 12 of A Dance to the Music of Time by Anthony Powell. Wow, I did, I, I just, what was it, like 3,000, 4,000 pages? Read the whole series, books one to 12. It's worth it because I get yourself in the mind of the author. They were writing a series. That's what they had in their mind as they wrote it. If you're American or you're British or India or Australia, Canadian literature is excellent, and what I consider to be the best Canadian literature, I think, is to read Margaret Lawrence and this series, the Manawaka series. The Stone Angel, man, it'll just break your heart wide open. Chest of God is very self-pitying, and The Fire Dwellers is quite manic in her anxiety. And the other two, I don't want to say anything about because I haven't read them for 20 years, but I will read them at some point this year and maybe I'll do a review of them at some point in the future. So, is it good? If you just pick this one novel up alone, it's just okay. The main character can be quite annoying in her constant anxiety and worry. If you read this as the third novel in a series of brilliant novels, which should be considered together, it is elevated quite a lot. What does that mean? It means just what I said. On its own, it's fair to moderate. The third book in the Manawaka series, it is quite good. Especially because in the Manawaka series, the different characters are referring to one another. Like towards the end of this novel, she meets with a character who is going to be the central figure of the fourth novel. I know that's a bit of a ploy nowadays with uh, superhero films, these referencer, references to that one and this one. And in literature, we don't often get that. Maybe Kurt Vonnegut, his character Kilgore Trout was appearing here and there in all of his novels. But I think that's a bit of a, for Christ's sake, Grant, don't say Easter egg. I think that's a bit of a, a hidden benefit to the noticeable reader. You remember her from the last book? Oh, you know, here's a little reference to her. If you remember, it's a bit of a like, oh yeah, I got that. I got that little slight reference to see if you're paying attention. Grant loves books. Sorry guys, today I drank a little bit too much beer before making the video. 